And Damian Lillard and Sam Amick in The Athletic has uh, a column up today about Dame's situation and that Dame has said all the right things to this point after the draft. Uh, but there is a meeting scheduled for this week before free agency where he and his agent will meet with the, the trailblazers and kind of lay out that you may have drafted well, uh, but you didn't add any veteran stars to help me get closer to winning. Well, and what Sam Amick is reporting is that Dame is very interested in joining the Miami Heat. He just has yet to give the uh, ultimatum to the Blazers that they have to move him yet. Well, so so that's out there that that could happen this week where Damian Lillard could be in play to move uh, Miami as a possible destination. Uh, how does Portland respond to that? And then do they go out and try and land Draymond Green? They go and try and land someone else. And then you like from a Bulls perspective, if all of that is taking place this week before free agency Friday at five, how how do the Bulls fix what they have when AK said last week, wait for free agency? Okay, we're waiting. Let's let's see what you have. Starts on Friday, five o'clock. Um, I think that I mean there were obviously reports from post draft that Dame wasn't happy that they used the pick, that he thought they should have traded it for some veteran players to try to help him win now because a rookie, even when Benyama is not coming in unless he came into a perfect situation where they were one player away, isn't helping you win a championship. He wanted that you could have spun that pick for two to three veteran players maybe and actually put something together around Dame for him to try to win something in Portland because he's been a good soldier. Like he's stayed through everything, has said multiple times he doesn't want to leave, said multiple times that he wants to build something, he wanted to build something there and win something there because he loved it there. But now at this point, you know, we talked about it last week. He doesn't want to be the bad guy, right? He doesn't want to be the guy that's like, I'm out. But now you've kind of forced it. Because when you don't use the pick to trade for veteran help, when you have the cap situation and you try to, you know, maybe you could bring in Draymond and make it work and then you try to do something. But it seems more likely that they're going to say we're not going to be able to make that work. And by not doing that, Dame can still look like the good guy and say, look at how much stuff I sat through. Like, look at all the rebuilds I sat through. Look at all the trades that I sat through and them trying to put stuff around. And I was a good soldier and a fan favorite and all that kind of stuff. But now it's time for me to go try to get something. And he should. It's just kind of the way the league works, right? Like, you can only hang around and do that for so long. And, you know, especially Portland, where they weren't a playoff team, they haven't been, and they need help. He needs help. Damon Lillard can't do it all himself, but mm -hmm. Dame as a standalone piece is somebody added to various championship contending teams really puts him over the top. Damian Lillard in Miami would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Damian Lillard in Los Angeles with the Lakers would make a lot of sense. Do the Lakers have enough to land him? Who knows? Uh, there are also teams like uh, Cleveland that have young players that are trying to win. Could that be a spot? Does New York get into the mix? That might be uh, on the, the horizon as well. And like, I think that's where it comes back to what we heard last week from the Bulls front office is that, you know, I'm reading Kevin O'Connor's piece on the ringer today, and he lists through every team in the league and how they could essentially be on Damian Lillard's list. And then he gets to the Bulls, the Mavericks, the Suns, and the Timberwolves. Don't have the assets. Cross them off the list. Well, I mean, like, I don't understand how the, the Bulls have been put into this spot where even when there's disgruntled stars, they have nothing. Now, it's not news. We know that they have nothing. Yeah. But the point being is the harsh reality that every single time there's a rumor or a star that becomes available or disgruntled and is ready to move on, the Bulls can't do anything, and they can never get better from the situation that they're in. And that's why I think it all comes back to being willing to move on from Zach Levine. And I think leading into the draft and after the draft and hearing and seeing the rumors and the sourced material being reported that the Bulls are out there asking what teams would be willing to give up for Zach Levine, that being real, I think is a, a major change in the way that they've approached this entire uh, kind of build for this franchise the last couple of seasons because they weren't willing to do that at the trade deadline with Zach Levine. Last offseason, they weren't willing to do that with Zach Levine. Now they are, 
based on source reporting. And so we'll see what happens this week, whether or not the Bulls will reshape their roster and get it to a point where hopefully they get in play with some of this. Like maybe maybe you miss out on Damian Lillard, but there'll be another guy in six months that'll be disgruntled and want to oh, go yeah. elsewhere. Absolutely. Maybe a Paul George, maybe, uh, you know, name name a, a star that's around the top 10 that could be available. It, it could happen. Luka. Luka Doncic, that, that is possible. There, there are guys out there that, you know, you would think long term they'll be in one place, but as we as history shows, yeah, and what's showing now with Lillard is even if Lillard wanted to be in Portland for his entire career, it's likely not going to take place. The problem is there's no action, right? The action at the trade deadline should have been let's get rid of Zach, let's get rid of DeMar, because this is not working, right? If you want to re-sign Vooch in the offseason, team friendly deal after you have because you think if the Bulls were in the same situation where they had the third overall pick, where they could have said to Portland, hey, you want to rebuild? All right, give us Dame. Here's a third pick. Do some other stuff. Make the money work, whatever it is. And that's, and then you can build around that because you still have Vooch. You've got Dame. You've got extra money. You can, do, you can make it work, right? But because they didn't and they ended up falling out of the play-in or losing the play-in and falling out of the lottery or out of the protected picks, top four protected, they could have had a chance at a top four pick. That's the problem. The inaction caused the inability to have assets. And yeah, is Zach Levine an asset? Sure, but you're resetting your franchise because what do you, let's say you wanted to trade for Dame. He, what is he coming here? It's the same thing. It's the same situation. He's not winning here either. Yeah, the, the only way that work, that would work, is if uh, you keep Zach or you keep Damar and you keep Vooch and you now have like three top players that are like Dame, Vooch, But then what are you giving to Rosen? They won't no, do it because so, what are you giving them? Right, right. But like that's where we, we now enter the territory of if the superstar is dictating the policy and the superstar is the one saying I'm out, then 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 Portland has to do something. Yes. And at that point, if you had assets, first round picks, you had young players who were developing, you know, like it's all good and great that we're seeing the Bulls post videos of uh, Dalen Terry and Patrick Williams working out, working out with DeMar DeRozan in the offseason. But, like, did Dale and Terry play at all last year? No. no. And Patrick Williams has taken way too long to develop. No. Oh my God. The fact that he hasn't taken that next step to be one of the better players on the team is a bit surprising at this point. I know he was young coming in, but that's where the Bulls, like, if they had young players that other teams valued, they could say, you know what? We've got this. Uh, we have this shooting guard, and Kobe White will do a sign and trade with Patrick Williams and, and Dale and Terry, and boom, three young players that could start for you for the future. Yeah, uh, we'll take back Damian Lillard, and we'll thaw out the rest of our roster with you know mid-level exception and guys who are just floating around the league. But the Bulls' young players haven't been developed, therefore you don't have any assets. No one wants any of it. No. Because all of their guys, the guys that they've drafted the past couple of years, and they included in, including this year to draft this year, are guys that can't shoot. They're guys that are athletic and guys that can defend. But when it comes down to what are you going to trade for, you want dudes that can shoot. You want guys that are lights out three point shooters. And the Bulls don't have that. They have one guy that's supposed to do that, and it's Zach Levine, and he hasn't lived up to it yet. Well, and he has improved every single season. I just don't think he, as your lead dog, that you're ever going to win anything. And he's proven it out. Uh, you know, the most that his team has ever won was last season. They got off to that hot start, and then Lonzo got hurt, and then the Bulls pointed to that as being the reason to why they, they were going to keep things together last offseason. But Zach Levine team has won exactly one playoff game. They missed the playoffs last year. Uh, this This previous season you know they were in the play-in i don't give uh, any extra credit to the franchise for being in the play-in no. you should be a solidified playoff team before the play-in each and every year you should never have to play in the play-in you're but the chicago bulls they didn't do it they knew their point guard had injury problems they knew that he was going to go into the season maybe being able to play maybe not being able to play definitely not starting the season and what do they do goran dragic that's what you do well, to Gorn, make up for the shooting? Yeah, I mean, Gordon's been a nice player, but to be the guy that that 
that be, is your starter every single night. And I think that's where they it, bought him out at the I end think, of the year. I think that's where it puts uh, too much on Alex Caruso because Caruso is a great sixth or seventh man. Yeah, he's not a great fifth guy where he has to start every night. And and that's where I think Caruso gets exposed is he's playing too many minutes. Manny and Frankfurt, you're on ESPN 1000. Hey, guys, how's it going? Good, man. What's up? So just, uh, I mean, I know this 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 has become repetitive talk with the Bulls and, and bad signing, uh, you know, uh, overvaluing players, uh, signing players to, uh, to, to max contracts that probably didn't deserve it. Like, I, I feel like we're one of the few teams, if not the only team in the NBA, who seem to go through the same issues every five to ten years. And it's just, it's just gotten old. And it's it just, you know, as a, as a fan, it has become very frustrating to, to go in every offseason with the same uh, talk. We can't, we can't go for the big guys, the big, the big signing, because we don't have the capital. Or we can't uh, trade because we don't have the draft capital to trade for, for a star-like player. And, and, and we end up with players like, um, you know, uh, Caruso or uh, what's the, Derek Jones Jr. And it's, it just gets to a point where we're spending money on players like that, that really on any other team would be, you know, maybe a seventh, eighth option, and we have them starting, I, you know, on, on the top, you know, on the starting five. This is, yeah. we, we should have never signed Zach, and I, and, and I uh, last year, whatever, before, before he became a free agent, and I called uh, Waddle and Sylvie, and Sylvie was like, so who do we sign? Or, 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 you know, why not sign him? Like, like we're supposed to be afraid that we can't sign this guy because we're afraid that we're not going to have a good team to put out there. So we're just going to spend money on a guy, overspend money on a guy who probably, who's probably not worth spending the money on because he can't stay healthy just because we want, uh, you know, fans to come see the team. It's just, it makes no sense. And then every, like I said, every year is the same thing over and over again, the same, same scenario, same talk frustrating yeah I, I agree with you man thanks for the phone call 312-332-3776 abdallah in the twitch chat uh, i see dave i see carm they, they're talking about how i said you're the chicago bulls how, how are you not competing how are you not a solidified playoff team each and every year and their point is what does that mean just because you're in chicago doesn't mean anything besides jordan the bulls have no positive history and I would say they got I would to the argue, Eastern Conference Finals. Well, yeah, with with Thibodeau and Rose and Noah and, and Luol Deng. But I, I would say this. I understand that the history outside of Jordan hasn't been great. But as far as a franchise goes, uh, the brand, the marketability of a team in the NBA, mm -hmm. the Bulls should be a top 10 team. Oh, yeah, every absolutely. year. Absolutely. They should be. People and, should want to come play here. The ownership group over there and people that work for the franchise should want to strive to be that. So, like, when I'm saying you're the Chicago Bulls, that means you should be in contention every year with Boston mm -hmm. and Philly who are trying to win championships. And the fact that your little brother up north has outpaced you the last decade, that, that's not good. The Milwaukee Bucks, the Bucks no. are a more viable franchise yeah. in, the, in the Eastern Conference than the Chicago Bulls. That they are. Come on now. It's a rivalry, but they're the little brother. Not anymore. And, and so that that's what I mean is that this, this franchise should be in the conversation at the top of the Eastern Conference each and every single season. Black and Dollar, we're in for Green